You're going to do an intro. I'm not going to say anything. Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to uh, type questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within a week um, at strivescan.com slash Illinois. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. And first up is Blackburn College. Thank you, Matt. Thank you uh, everyone for tuning in tonight. My name is Dr. Stephen Lambert. I work with Blackburn College. I'm the Vice President for Inclusive Enrollment and I'm excited. I appreciate you know anyone tuning in live or watching this recording here. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to keep it concise here. Blackburn College, uh, I'm excited to share this. I do have one of our um, outstanding admissions counselors on here too who can answer questions throughout or afterwards. Her name is Neely. Some quick facts. We are located in Carlinville, Illinois, uh, which is honestly right between St. Louis and Springfield. Um, we have a 80 acre campus. What's interesting is most of it was built by our students. We're a work college and I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Um, we have right around 500 students. So we are definitely on the smaller end of the spectrum. And with that total body being less, you know, way less than a thousand, uh, we have essentially a 12 to one ratio. What's neat is as you start, you know, you might have 16 or 17 students in your class. And then when you pick your major and you get into the tougher classes, your junior, senior year, you might have a class with eight students. Uh, I walked by one in our science lab that had five students in it. And so it's a really personal experience. And then um, based on that, you know, based on that, those relationships and our work program, we have a really high placement rate for uh, either having work, before, you know, while, right after you graduate or within six months uh, or continuing your education because a lot of students go on um, to grad school if they want to. In terms of academics, we're a liberal arts college, which means we offer a wide variety uh, of majors, ranging from bio and the sciences, computer science, all the way to art. Um, we have uh, a pretty strong theater uh, program, music program. And as our art faculty put it, we have a dirty art program, you know, a more hands-on program. But we, off we offer business administration, history, law, public administration. So it's a, it's a pretty broad um, education. And it's okay if you're undecided. That might be one of your questions at the end, but I'll tell you now that is okay. Uh, our work program. So you might not be familiar. Honestly, I wasn't until I joined Blackburn. There are only eight schools in the entire country that have a work program. So wherever you go, you will probably have the opportunity to work through work study or just through a job on campus or off campus. But we have the only one in the entire country that's a work program run by students. And so what that means is when you step foot on our campus and you walk into an office, odds are you're going to see students running the office or running the program or the department or running our athletic events. Um, it's a very hands on institution. Uh, and with that, you're guaranteed $5,000 in tuition credit. So it's not just a, a school where we have a bunch of unpaid internships. We want you to get experience working before you graduate. So when you go on, you know, you know, you don't just have a degree in business. You also have experience in an accounting office or you don't just have, you know, a psychology degree. You actually have, you know, you have experience running a lab and doing those types of things. In terms of our cost, we're relatively affordable. We're one of the least expensive uh, sticker price here in Illinois, despite being a private school. So our, you can see our tuition is right around um, just over 25,000. And then we tack on almost 9,000 more for room and board. So uh, you can see a sticker price of 34,390. To me uh, and to I'm sure a lot of people, that sounds like a lot and it is. Um, but the good news is we are on pace to offer scholarships to 100% of our incoming um, full-time students. So I, no one should really be paying that is another way to put it. Uh, and that's what I do. We offer grants and scholarships that are merit-based. That means it's based off of your, your um, high school GPA. 
we don't look at SAT scores um, for admissions or for scholarships, but we are affordable. So we start from an affordable place, but we end up um, bringing it down. Uh, I kind of got ahead of myself there. So like I said, our scholarships are GPA based. Um, the key is filing your FAFSA. That's something that I love to talk about and help. So if you have questions at the end, maybe you can um, ask all of us those kinds of things. In terms of our residence life, um, we have a, a, a whole host of dorms. It's in a relatively rural area. So we do have a, a good commuting population, but um, we do have uh, plenty of residence halls, plenty of parking too, to be honest. This one hits home for me, our student activities, because it's been tough in a pandemic. It's definitely been tough, I'm sure, um, for you in high school. And we're just starting to get things really rolling again. Um, and we have a whole host of student run activities. I mean, this, this is a, a complete list here, but you know, sustainability is important. Um, I'll shout out our Habitat for Humanity because we just approved uh, them even through our COVID policies to go out and do some um, rebuilding. They're, they're, they spend their weekends um, rebuilding and we're doing that even through the COVID era. Division three athletics. So we are super competitive, but um, yeah, we're division three. So it's not a huge school, you know, you wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest you consider us if you want a big, you know, robust college football program, but um, shout out to our men's basketball who beat last year's um, conference championship in a double overtime last night. Um, like I said, we have uh, a really great theater uh, and, and acting program, our choir. Um, you can be a business major and you can participate in our theater. You can, um, you know, you don't have to be a theater major. And so I'll, I'll end with this. You can apply right on our website. It's a free application. The key is you just apply through our website and send your transcript, no test scores, uh, and it's rolling. So we're still accepting students for this fall and we're still awarding scholarships for the fall. So again, thank you for your time. Great, thank you so much. Uh, up next is Lawrence University. Good evening, good people of Illinois. Uh, my name is Keegan White and I'm an Associate Director of Admissions at Lawrence University. Uh, Lawrence is a small college of 1500 students and we're located three hours north of Illinois in beautiful Appleton, Wisconsin, the fifth largest city in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, you'll find an airport and a bus station that will get you to Chicago in about four hours and, and throughout Illinois from there. Um, and a bustling downtown with coffee shops, restaurants, farmers market, museums, river trails, we're right on a river, and a performing arts center that hosts national touring casts. Um, we've had Hamilton in town, Lion King, etc. cetera, um, for Broadway shows, I should say. Um, and Lawrence is unique in that we're both a nationally ranked College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and a highly selective Conservatory of Music. Both are undergraduate only and our students pursue either a Bachelor of Arts degree in the college or a Bachelor of Music degree in our conservatory or both through our five year double degree program, which is quite popular. At Lawrence, students are challenged and nurtured through personalized experiences in our small classes with a ton of faculty connections. Thanks in part to our eight to one student to faculty ratio, which is uh, along with Blackburn, uh, my predecessor here presenting today, one of the smallest in the country. So we have a student body that's inherently curious, welcoming, engaged, and passionate about what they do. Uh, faculty are equally engaged, not only with their own scholarship, but especially in their teaching. At Lawrence, we're a small in number, but rich in people and resources, all deeply invested in the success of our students. The academic program at Lawrence, whoops, sorry. Um, the academic program at Lawrence is bookended by two quintessential scholarly experiences, first year ex studies and senior experience. So first year studies is an expansive introduction to the liberal arts which ensures that each student and faculty member is exposed to a diversity of subjects and perspectives and has the opportunity to learn, to communicate, and to expand their horizons. And then senior experience is the culmination of a Lawrence education. It's unique to each student, yet it's universal to students across the university. 
every graduating senior produces something significant. It could be an independent or collaborative research project, art exhibition, scholarly paper, or a senior recital. But the point is you're sharing your gifts, generating new knowledge, and preparing for your next steps in life. This academic journey through the liberal arts teaches our students to be adaptive and to thrive in difficult circumstances, something that we could all use more of uh, this past year and moving forward. And doesn't just prepare you for a career, but rather helps you to pro thrive professionally, personally, and as a contributing member of your community. And so it's no coincidence that our graduates enjoy a 99% placement rate within six months of graduation. Lawrence is a residential community with nearly 100% of our students living on campus all four years. And they live large. They are engaged in activities outside of the classroom with endless energy, enthusiasm, and panache. Uh, here at Lawrence, we have all the amenities of a big school in a big city right outside our residence hall doors. NCAA Division III athletics, world-class music ensembles and theater productions, 150 student organizations, events both large and small. Suffice it to say, if you have a passion you want to pursue in college, you'll find an outlet here at Lawrence. In addition to our residential campus in Appleton, we have two satellite campuses. The first is, is this beautiful uh, lodge on a mile of Lake Michigan shoreline in Door County, Wisconsin, that's used as a weekend retreat center by our students. It's just a beautiful and serene setting that's really special to all Laurentians. And then our last campus is our London Center, which is the most popular of our 50 study abroad programs. So if you're looking for a global experience, you'll find Lawrence's student body and faculty to be diverse. We have nearly every state represented in race, as well as 25% who identify as first generation college students and 15% hailing from a foreign country. So uh, Lawrence, I think, is sure to broaden your horizons. Uh, here's a quick look at the average profile of our incoming Laurentians. We have a holistic review process. We do not require standardized test scores for admission or scholarship. Um, for some of our applicants, an optional interview is a great way for you to uh, you know, help me discover your true fit and ability to su succeed here. Just remember that the, the first key is to show your academic preparedness or potential. Um, we also have a really generous financial aid policy with nearly 100% of our students receiving merit scholarship up to $31,000 per year and uh, half receiving additional need-based grants as well. And we need, meet the financial need of over 90% of our admitted students. So we're, we're working towards meeting 100% of financial need here at Lawrence. Um, and then don't forget about me. I'll put my information in the chat, but just know that we're really student-centered here at Lawrence, and, and that starts with me. I'm gonna put you at the center of, of this whole process as the most important thing that I do every day. So please feel free to contact me. We're open for tours. I hope you'll come and join us. Um, and I will now pass it to Lakeland College, Lakeview College of Nursing. Hey everyone, one second and I will share my screen with you. I am Nigel Givens. I'm the admissions recruiter here at Lakeview College of Nursing. Here at Lakeview, all we do is nursing. So we are a four year college for college juniors and seniors. Our students are actually all transfer students that come their junior and senior year and graduate with their bachelor's of science in nursing and their RN license. Um, we have two campuses, one in Danville, Illinois and our other campus is in Charleston, Illinois. Danville is, in, is about two and a half hours from Chicago, Charleston is about two and a half hours from St. Louis. Um, at Lakeview, our students on both locations are in person. So our students are actively going to lectures, going to skills lab, and also going to different medical facilities for their clinical rotations. Um, for 2020, our NCLEX pass rate is 95%. The NCLEX is the state test that our students take to become actual RN nurses. And at Lakeview, about 91% of all of our qualified applicants are admitted into the program. Because we have two campuses, typically we do not have to waitlist a lot of students. That's something you'll definitely want to ask your schools as you apply, especially with nursing programs, since they are very competitive.
Um, at Lakeview, we do offer two transfer specific scholarships as we are a transfer school. Um, our merit-based and our need-based scholarships are each worth $20,000. We do also offer a Phi Theta Kappa scholarship um, and that is, ranges between $500 and $2,000. Uh, tuition per year is about 27000 but we do offer a lot of financial aid, so our students aren't necessarily paying all of that out of pocket. About 84% of our students um, do receive some type of financial aid, whether it's our transfer scholarships or one of our private scholarships that students are able to apply to once they have been accepted into the program. We do also offer $4,000 scholarships to high school seniors that live in specific counties in Illinois and in Indiana. So for our admissions requirements, we are not looking at anything that you're doing in high school. We're strictly looking at your GPA in college and your college courses. So our students have to complete their first 60 credit hours of gen eds and prereq courses. They have to have a 2.5 GPA or higher. On average, our students have about a 3.0, 3.1, and they have to complete the HESI A2 admissions test. Um, most nursing schools will require you to take some form of a nursing entrance exam, either the HESI, the Kaplan, or the T's. Right now, we require the HESI score in reading. So after they take the full HESI exam and are completing their prereqs, I work with my students or my prospective students uh, to make sure that they've completed the required courses. So this is kind of a list of the courses that you'll have to take once you start college. Um, and so you can go to any regionally accredited school that's either a two year or a four year. You don't have to have any licensure or an associate's degree to come, but we do have tracks for students that do get their associate's degree or their LPN or RN license. Um, but our students are taking anatomy and physiology, um, chemistry, microbiology. So if you're in high school, definitely try to take as many science courses as you can. And if you take Take dual enrollment courses, a lot of times I can count that uh, towards your prereq courses as long as it's from a regionally accredited school. We offer admission two times a year, so in the fall and the spring. So I would start working with you your sophomore year in college. Our students are actually apply the semester before they plan to attend so that in the semester in between they can finish out whatever classes that's required of them. We are in person, so if you are interested in coming to campus, please feel free to visit our website. You can book a private tour, a virtual tour, or virtual meeting. Um, I'm always available if you have questions about nursing school or just about applying to college in general. Nursing school is very competitive, so it's my job to really work with my prospective students as soon as they start college and start taking those gen ed and prereq courses so that when they do apply that they are really strong candidates. I will put my information in the chat. Um, you can email admissions at lakeviewcol.edu for more information. Please feel free to check out our Facebook or our YouTube page for more information and for a couple of videos about things going on on campus. Thank you all so much and have a good day. Great, thank you so much. And up next is Northeastern Illinois University. Hi, good morning everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still thinking it's morning. I apologize. I've only had three Coca-Colas today, just so you know. Um, thank you so much for attending. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that I can share my presentation with you. All right. Um, so thank you very much. My name is Fabi Callis, and I am one of the freshman admission counselors at Northeastern Illinois University. I am also the senior admissions counselors. I've been with Northeastern for a couple years, uh, almost two decades actually, um, as a freshman admission counselor. Northeastern is located in Chicago, Illinois. We're one of the 12 state schools um, in the state of Illinois. And just some general information about our campus. We have about 7,119 students enrolled at Northeastern. About 100 different countries represent our student body. We are considered an HSI, which means we're a Hispanic serving institution. We offer a total of 80 plus undergraduate and graduate programs. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. 
and our average class size is about 15. We have about 80 different clubs uh, that students can join. Now it has been difficult this last year because of COVID. Um, it's been exactly a year that we closed down and went remote because of COVID restrictions. Uh, our motto is learn in the city and lead in the world. Many of our students go on to find careers working in, the, in Chicago, in the state of Illinois, in the country, and in many times they've actually traveled all over the world for employment opportunities as well. So what does it cost to attend Northeastern? Currently our tuition is about 11,826. That does not include um, housing. So if students wanted to live on campus, there is an additional charge for that can range from anywhere to 8,000 to 11,000, depending on the housing, I'm sorry, the floor plan they choose at our student resident hall. But the um, average uh, tuition is 11,000, 826, 85% of our students receive financial aid. Our average award is about 6,000. Uh, that includes FAFSA and MAP. Um, and if students are taking out student loans, then that would add a little more to the cost of tuition. So I'm sorry, to the redu reduction of tuition. We encourage students to also apply for both private and institutional scholarships so that students can lower their tuition. Um, our students that live in any of our neighboring states, such as Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Missouri, and um, Kentucky will also receive in-state tuition. And undocumented students would receive in-state tuition if they meet the requirements of the Acevedo bill that was passed in 2003. And you can compare the tuition rate for students that live outside of our neighboring states, which it's a little bit more, it's about $25,000. How does that compare to other universities in the, in the state of Illinois, state universities, I should mention? Um, we are a little bit less than uh, UIC, ISU, Governor State, and Eastern. Of course, this is based on a full-time student rate going uh, full-time 12 credit hours each semester. Northeastern has been named one of the top schools where students graduate with the least amount of debt by the magazine US News and World Report. So we're actually very proud of that. I'm a Northeastern alum. I graduated in the last century and I could tell you tuition back then was, was very um, affordable as it is now. Uh, talking a little bit about scholarships, we award about $3 million worth of scholarships each year. We want to make sure the students pay attention to the deadline. Our, our talent-based, merit-based, and foundation scholarships are open to undocumented and DACA students. Specific scholarships for freshmen, we have the Presidential Scholarship that covers all four years of tuition fees and the student gets a book stipend. You do have to have a high ACT and high SAT scores so that you can qualify for that. Um, if you do have questions, I'm going to pop my email address in the chat box after the presentation so that if you have questions about scholarships, you are very welcome to contact me and I'll give you as much information as I can. If you're a city student and you attend City Colleges of Chicago, you know that you can get the Chicago Star Scholarship and there's some more information from our financial aid office. And this is just a quick overview of the majors that we offer. Uh, Northeastern has uh, three different colleges, the College of Arts and Science, College of Education, and the College of Business and Management. All the majors that are highlighted in white and bold white letters, those are our top majors. So biology, pre-med, computer science, communication, media, and theater, justice studies, which is our pre-law major as well as philosophy, social work, accounting, management, and early childhood education. So what do you need to do to apply? Well, you need to have a minimum 2.5 GPA uh, to be guaranteed admission. We are test optional. We only want students uh, to send their scores if they're applying for any of our merit-based scholarships, obviously, that require those. So keep that in mind. It's not required to be admitted, but if you are applying for scholarships, you want to make sure that you send the, your ACT and or SAT scores to Northeastern. 
And three steps in applying, you just want to go to our online application. It's neiu.edu slash apply. You need to arrange for your official high school transcripts to be sent from your high school to Northeastern. There is a $30 application fee, but it can be waived. We will waive it. And of course, we encourage you to apply for FAFSA or the RISE Act if you can. Uh, and if you're a junior, you wouldn't be applying for FAFSA until October of your senior year. If you're a senior right now, hopefully you've already submitted your application for FAFSA. And our school code is listed on the bottom. Um, and that is the end of my presentation. And I am going to go ahead and pass it to my colleague at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Will, and I'm one of the admissions counselors at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Um, now, as you can uh, imagine, when you hear the word Illinois Tech, um, you're probably automatically thinking of things like um, te technology, computer science, engineering, uh, architecture. All of these are some of our most well-known programs. Um, so there's obviously a good reason that you're thinking of those. We have uh, almost uh, 11 different types of engineering available for students, everything from mechanical, aerospace, um, lots and lots of options there. In computer science, you could do things like artificial intelligence. You could do a cybersecurity focused program. But we're not only STEM. Uh, we also have uh, opportunities for you to blend your traditional humanities with the STEM fields. So you get a chance to do something like uh, behavioral health and wellness, where we look at how do we use technology to help people make better health decisions. Um, you also have options if you wanted to study business and blend that with one of our more science-based programs. Um, Illinois Tech has about 3,000 undergraduate with students. Um, so it is a small environment where you're going to get to know your professors quite well. And hopefully um, you'll build great relationships, not only with them, but also with the other students in your classes. We want you to really think about what it means to be a part of the student body and hopefully uh, enjoy uh, some teamwork because you'll get a chance to do that quite a bit um, at, at the university. It is a very uh, diverse community at Illinois Tech with all 50 US states represented, as well as 80 different US countries. 40% um, of our students from are from out of the state. So you'll get a chance to meet folks who had a very different experience than you growing up um, or um, some who, who may, you know, have been in your high school class. Um, you're not going to be uh, the only student from, from Illinois, obviously. Um, we have a, a very strong uh, relationship, or sorry, we help you build a very strong relationship with your faculty. They are the folks who are in the classroom teaching your courses. They're also going to be your academic advisors who are helping you pick the classes that you want to take. Make sure that you're getting the best possible experience as a student. In addition to that academic focus, we are also a very hands-on focused university. So we're encouraging you to not only learn those basic concepts in the classroom, but really take a chance to apply them. Um, so a few of the different ways we do that are on the screen for you right now. Um, our undergraduate research program will help you to not only get involved in professors work or graduate students work, but also hopefully actually lead your own projects by the time you graduate from Illinois Tech. Um, we also have our interprofessional projects, which is a year long problem solving course that all students take at Illinois Tech. You come together as a small group of about 10 to 12 students, hopefully uh, in a very interdisciplinary team. So maybe only one or two students from your major on the team. And then you all decide how do we want to approach this problem? How do we think we can best uh, solve uh, this, this specific topic? Um, you get to choose that um, and hopefully you'll be very successful. And if not, hopefully you'll learn some lessons. Um, last, we have our Elevate program. And this is all about helping you explore options off campus. So if you know the research experience wasn't enough or the iPro wasn't exactly what you're looking for, maybe it's an internship. Maybe it's a study abroad experience. Could be you want to take a full semester off and do a co-op and work full time for a company. Our Elevate program will help you explore all of those options and figure out which one might be the best fit for you. It's not 100% academic at the university, though we are quite an academic university. You have to really enjoy uh, the subjects that you're planning to study at the university. But we also want you to get involved out of the classroom. We've got over 150 different clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. Some of those are gonna be uh, affinity groups. Uh, maybe it's uh, you know a cultural organization or a religious uh, group that you might be a part of. Maybe you wanna give back to the community or you wanna do advocacy work. 
Or what you'll find is a lot of opportunities at Illinois Tech to connect your out of classroom experiences back to that major you're studying. So maybe it's the Civil Engineer Society where you're going to come together and build a concrete canoe and compete against other engineering schools throughout the Midwest. Maybe it's uh, working with our Engineers Without Borders to help uh, design bridges and waterways in other countries. Whatever you are most passionate about, there's probably a student organization that exists for you. And if not, you can hop on the train. You'll be in the center of downtown Chicago in just about 10 or 15 minutes. Very quick and easy access to the city. And we encourage you to really think of that as an extension of campus. We do have NCAA Division III athletics as well as an esports program. And we are a residential campus. So you do live on campus all four years um, at Illinois Tech if you'd like. You're required to live on campus for your first two. Now, when it comes to the application process, we are a common app school. There is no fee to apply. We are also on a rolling admissions process. We are still accepting applications for this year. And then for next year's class, we would encourage you to apply anywhere between August 1st uh, through November 15th to give you the best possible scholarship consideration. What we're gonna ask for is your high school transcript, uh, one letter of recommendation, up to three can be submitted. And then if you have test scores and wanna submit those, great. If not, we are test optional. So we are not requiring those for next year's class. You wanna have mostly an AB average and you wanna make sure you're doing quite well in your math and science classes if you are considering an engineering computer science program at the university. What we look for is who you are as an individual. So we wanna to get to know you. We wanna do that holistic review, um, really get a chance to read your applications, read those letters of recommendation. And when you apply, you're automatically considered for up to full tuition scholarships. There's no separate application process that you have to do for that. Our students are automatically considered for anywhere between the lowest end of about 10,000 and then up to full tuition uh, scholarships at the university. We do also have some special scholarships, things like leadership, robotics, um, esports, all of those different opportunities as well. And we do have some really great success for our graduates, and that all contributes to some of those statistics you see on our website uh, or see on the screen rather. That return on investment um, being really uh, a great option for students who uh, want to go out into the industry. Lastly, I want to uh, point out our pre-college programs. If you're thinking, what do I want to do this summer? Maybe you want to take a course in offensive and defensive hacking. Maybe you want to learn more about architecture. I'd encourage you to visit our website and learn about our pre-college programs. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Great, thank you, Will. Um, and unfortunately, our final pre uh, presentation um, from the University uh, from Chicago State University, they couldn't join us tonight. So um, that does conclude our presentations. And now we have some time for Q and A. I'll ask all of our uh, presenters to come back on camera. And our first question is, um, uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And I'll uh, start back um, with Blackburn College and we'll go in the yeah. same order that you presented. Yeah, so even though you know we're still in this pandemic, as it hopefully winds down, the advice is definitely to visit you know, as many campuses as you can. And I know that's not easy for everyone, but um, but it's it's really something to see a website or to have a great relationship with a counselor or an advisor, but you, you really have to visit if you can, that way you, you get a good feel for it. Um, and then also, even if I say this, even if, you know, I hear Blackburn's my number one choice, like apply to multiple places, like have options. Even if, even if you know, your heart's set on a place, not that you should ha necessarily have a backup for the sake of it, but just so you know what your options are in terms of financial aid and and, and those kinds of things. So, yeah, I uh, I'll s sort of second what Steve Stephen said about visiting uh, whenever possible. Uh, but there's lots of content online that you can you can check out in the meantime if you're not quite ready for that. Um, and also, I'd encourage you to, to really be self-reflective. This is sort of the first time in your life, perhaps, that you are you are making the choice and shaping your own future. You know, like like a lot of your previous decisions were made with your with your parents or your family in mind or whatever. And this is you you are now kind of grasping your your future. And this is this is like you know the beginning of adulthood. So make sure that you're considering the environment where you're going to learn best, where you're going to feel welcome and supported, um, you know, and set yourself up for, for what's right for you, not just what your friends think or what your parents think or what your, what your aunt says, you know, and, and that can be hard at first because you may not know all the answers right now and that's okay. 
I would say to definitely ask questions um, for all of the recruiters that you're meeting. No question is too large, even if they may not know the answer there. If they don't know, they're definitely going to go and find it out for you for the most part. Um, if you're unsure about financial aid, ask them about their scholarships. A lot of times there's scholarships out there that students don't even apply for. And I know as admissions counselors, we're oftentimes talking to our colleagues, trying to find, you know, any anyone that can apply for these specific scholarships. So make sure you're asking questions, whether it's admissions requirements, scholarship information, um, someone out there will be able to answer those questions or find the answers for you. Um, my suggestion is if you are, if you don't know what your major is, don't let people tell you what your major should be. It's okay to be undecided. Um, no one knows. I changed my major three times. I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. Um, but, you know, anywhere that you go, whether you go to Blackburn, Northeastern, uh, IIT, you're going to have to do general education classes. Uh, they may not be the same classes, but you have to do general education classes. And that's typically when students will experiment and maybe consider taking that archaeology class. I've always wanted to be Indiana Jones. So I'm gonna take that Indi that intro to archeology span class. So it's okay if you're undecided and it's okay to tell us that you're undecided. We won't pressure you into choosing a major, um, but I will tell you if we don't have the major at, at Northeastern as well. Awesome. And then my piece of advice, all of these were great. So um, at the end, I had to dig deep there. But uh, my piece of advice would be to don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Uh, when I was looking at colleges, um, you know, most of the kids from my high school went to sort of one institution. Um, and I decided to go somewhere where I was the only student from my from my high school and really from the region I grew up. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, step out of your comfort zone and, and challenge yourself a little bit. Great, thank you all. Um, our next question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? For sticking with the same order, one thing that's, that's new to me are our, I came from concert in our madrigals, which is like a, a, a theater um, music uh, event. I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, <laughs> but it's pretty unique. Um, I went to a small school and we had a good theater program. We didn't have that aspect. And so if you're into uh, like live entertainment, it's definitely something you want to witness uh, in person as a student. And I'm actually going to introduce my colleague, Neely. I didn't get a chance wow. earlier, so I'll pass. I will, um, I'll throw in there too. We have a rock on campus um, that our students paint and it's depending on holiday, um, something happening on campus. It's been painted on since like the early 1800s. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of layers and they are peeling off slowly, but it's super cool to see like something different um, every other week, honestly, um, that our students do. Lawrence is the host of uh, the longest running trivia contest in the world. So we know um, because it's called the, the Great Midwest Trivia Contest and students run it for out of our radio station, which is, you know, hosted online now. And um, it's 50 straight hours of trivia on a weekend in February from like 10 p.m. Friday to midnight on uh, on Sunday. And, uh, and then the last question is always the first question of the next year. And so sort of like, you know, it's this continuous loop of trivia every for 50 hours once a year. And it's just a fun way to break up the Wisconsin winters. It doesn't always look like this. So so this the trivia contest is just a goofy fun thing for us to, to do in the winter. Um, my favorite tradition at Lakeview would have to be triage day. So at the end of the year, right before graduation, um, or right at the end of the semester, our senior students actually walk into our skills lab and the juniors and the faculty um, all have basically an idea of something that's going on and our students have to use those on the spot skills that they've learned um, in our nursing program to basically triage everything that's happening. So we, they actually use our simulators. Um, students are acting, we use costume makeup. I think one year 
it was a hurricane had touched down in the area. So they had to divide and conquer uh, patients, which patients are going to have to be uh, flown out via helicopters. Um, it's really cool. It's really allowing them to use their uh, skills that they've learned. Um, but it's also really funny because the students are acting. Um, we have a real life birthing simulator, but our students were actually being the voice of that simulator who was giving birth in the middle of our earthquake. So it's really fun. It's a really um, great opportunity for them to learn, but also to kind of have fun a little bit too. Um, at Northeastern, there's a lot of different events. As I mentioned before, I'm an alum of Northeastern. The one that I enjoyed attending was our fall into fun fest. Uh, which was uh, all the student organizations uh, with like within a couple of weeks of the fall semester would have an event where they introduced themselves to the all the new students, all the other current students from the hip hop club to the Greeks on campus. Um, and then it would culminate with a talent show uh, at the end of that week. Um, all the Greeks did some what they call stepping and it was really cool. So I enjoyed that. And in the spring, they have the Chuck Kane a golf outing where they have different celebrities. Um, they've had former Bears players, Cub players come and be part of this scholarship opportunity where students that are majoring in physical education could win scholarship money. So those are some of the, I do, I'm not a golfer, so I don't attend that one, but I do donate money to the event itself. So there's a lot of things to do. Awesome. And then at Illinois Tech, um, I mentioned diversity um, is definitely a big thing at our university. So um, one of my favorite ways to explore diversity is through food. Um, so we have an event called the Taste of Illinois Tech, where all of the different cultural and religious organizations host uh, a table and share um, some piece of, of food that connects to their culture uh, or their traditions. And so it's a way to kind of learn a little bit um, and enjoy food, which everyone loves. <laughs> Awesome, thank you all. Um, well, that does bring us to the end of this session. Uh, so I wanna say thank you for joining us. Thank you to our presenters for all the information you've shared. Um, and after you close the window, a very quick four question survey will appear. We do appreciate your feedback. Uh, please do sign up for additional sessions. Uh, and again, a recording will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Illinois. So, Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your evenings. Bye, thanks.